there is not one team better than the Boston Celtics. Yeah, I said it. Not Golden State, not Phoenix, not the Clippers, and definitely not Kings, Grizzlies, or I'm sorry, Lakers. The production on both ends of the court nearly puts them in a league of their own. They have shooters, scorers, bigs, and both interior and perimeter defenders that will cause even your favorite NBA players a load of problems. Why and how exactly are the Boston Celtics so great? Well, it starts with their head coach, Joe Mazzula. You see, after the entire Ime Uduka scandal, many thought the Celtics would have a disappointing season because of the difference between the performances with and without Uduka was huge. But coach Mazzula stepped right in and elevated his players to new heights. Under him, the Celtics finished the regular season 57 and 25, which was just a game behind the number one seed that was overtaken by Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks. His coaching methods seemed to really reconcile with the young group, especially Robert Williams. Well, he has an even level of building you up and tearing you down at the same time, said Robert Williams. So even though he encouraged me, he even challenges me all the time. Don't get me wrong, while Missoula has been a fantastic coach thus far, it's the players themselves that have really shown their dominance, starting of course with Jason Tatum. Tatum averaged 30 points, 9 rebounds, and 5 assists while shooting 46% from the field, 36% from the 3, and 85% from the free throw line. So yeah, Tatum has been well, Tatum. He is continuing to show the NBA world why he's one of the best scorers in the NBA, competing with elite scorers such as Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Steph Curry. He's virtually unguardable in isolation situations, and unless you're Andrew Wiggins, he can make even the best defenders look like amateurs. He's 12th in the NBA in points per game off the isolation plays, while also being ultra efficient in the process. We all know he can create with the best of them, but his ability to get to the rim and convert is what really makes him so tough offensively. He's 15th in the NBA in shots in the restricted area, which is basically layups at the rim. While there aren't many players in the league who can create their own shots at an elite level while being an elite finisher and not to mention a free throw shooter as well, Tatum's improvement as a playmaker has been noticeable too. He's averaging a career high in assists per game and on the defensive end, he's still one of the best defensive wings in the NBA, especially when he's fully locked in and able to cover multiple positions. His partner in crime, Jalen Brown, definitely carries his weight in this duo though. He's averaging 27 points, 7 rebounds, and 4 assists while shooting 49% from the field, 33% from the 3, and 76% from the free throw line. Like Tatum, he can finish at the rim at an elite level. In fact, he's a better finisher than his counterpart Jason Tatum. He's 11th in shots in the restricted area, finishing 70% of his shots on six attempts per game. He's literally the perfect Robin to Tatum's Batman. And honestly, he's so talented and efficient that they both can switch roles at any given time. With that being said, they still aren't the most surprising Celtics on the roster. Instead, that award goes to Derek White. Derek White has been a godsend for Coach Missoula. He acts as the Celtic Swiss Army knife. He does every little thing imaginable to get his team a dub in the win column. He only averaged around 12 points, 3 rebounds, and 3 assists, but in this year's playoff series versus the Atlanta Hawks, his true form, so to speak, has come to life. In this series, he's averaging nearly 20 points per game while shooting 52% from 3 on 6 attempts per game. So he's been getting buckets, along with grabbing 4 rebounds and dishing out a few assists. The 28-year-old veteran is having by far the best shooting season of his solid career. He shot just under 34% over the past two seasons. Now he's shooting 38% on the season on decent attempts. White has played so great that Boston fans were even blurting out MVP champs while he was at the free throw line. And Celtic superstar Jason Tatum said this in regards to it. I mean, shoot, I was happy for him, said Tatum. He's been playing his ass off these last two games. Obviously a big, big reason why we've won the last two games. We need him to continue to play at this level, and he can. So I was happy to hear that. We talked about it after the game. He was like, that's what it feels like? And I was like, yeah, I guess. I'm glad Derek White is finally starting to get recognition because he has always been a solid high IQ hustle player. 
especially on the defensive end. White has had another tremendous year on defense, finishing top two in blocks per game among all guards and first in the Eastern Conference. He makes an already great defensive team 10 times better due to how smart and versatile he is. Now, he won't ever win a Defensive Player of the Year award, but he was honestly just as effective as some of the finalists in the race. With Smart missing over 20 games this regular season, the Celtics needed another strong perimeter defensive presence that could cause havoc on opposing guards. White accepted the challenge. Even when Smart was down, the Celtics' defense continued to be one of the best. Speaking of Marcus Smart, the Celtics have the best chance of getting to the finals when he gives maximum production and not just on the defensive end. He's the Celtics version of Draymond Green, basically, and is the heart and leader of the defense. Unlike Green though, Marcus is a solid offensive player. For one, he has been one of the more underrated playmakers and facilitators in the NBA. Averaging six assists per game, which ranked just outside the top 20. He isn't much of a shooter, but he shot the three pretty well in the Atlanta series, even making three threes in game three. On the defense, the reigning defensive player of the year continues to be one of the best in the league. I know, there's this notion that he didn't deserve the defensive player of the year award, but if you actually watch and understand basketball, you would really appreciate all he does on that end of the floor. What really makes Boston a more complete team is their centers and bigs such as Robert Williams. Williams has struggled to stay healthy and it's a shame because a healthy Time Lord is a defensive player of the year candidate without question. He hasn't blocked shots at the same rate as last season, that's mainly due to his minute restrictions. But although he isn't the same defender he was last year, he still is a problem of the paint. When on the floor, he sort of puts the cherry on top of the Boston defense. They have excellent perimeter defenders, so now, so now when you have a shot blocking machine behind them, it makes their defense impenetrable at times. When he goes off the bench though, much of the production from the center spot doesn't fall off. And that's because of 36-year-old veteran Al Horford. Horford, even at his age, is still a very unique player. He has a mix of both old school and modern day skills. He's a tough, rugged, and physical player while also being skilled enough to shoot, take you off the dribble when needed, and defend at a pretty good level all around. But Tatum, Brown, White, Smart, Williams, and Horford aren't the only impactful players on the roster. Sixth man of the year, Malcolm Brogdon, will be huge for Boston this playoff run. 15 points, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists off the bench doesn't just fall from the sky, and many teams wish they had a Malcolm Brogdon, especially given the fact he can defend at a high level. All in all, the Celtics might just have the best chance to win it all this season. They're too well-rounded of a team, and with them now having competed with the Golden State Warriors in last year's finals, they have all the experience and confidence needed to add yet another trophy to their historic organization.